Pi can creep up in unexpected places. In this video, we'll look at how throwing needles randomly over lines that are separated at a certain distance can speed out Pi through a beautiful piece of mathematical application. Today, we're talking about the Buffon's needle. Let the yellow lines represent the needles that we are throwing over grey lines. Can you see pi anywhere as the needle is dropped randomly in various configurations? Well, I can. To understand what sorcery this is, let's try looking at the mathematics of what's happening. Let's say that a green needle falls at an angle of theta with a particular line. The yellow dot represents the center of the needle and D is the shortest distance between the center of the needle and the line. The side of the needle below the center is of course L by 2 and the projection of that part in the vertical direction is L by 2 sine theta, some typical high school trigonometry here. Now how would you write this in mathematical terms? Well if you look closely at the figure it must not be very hard to see that for the intersection of a needle with a line the distance d should always be smaller than l by 2 sine theta. Now we must realize that theta can be constrained from 0 to pi by 2 and the distance d can range from 0 to d by 2 where d is the distance between two lines. Well theta to be precise can range from 0 to 2 pi. However taking 0 to pi by 2 makes our calculations easier and doesn't meddle with any of our calculations. You'll see why that works in a while. I am now going to show how we can use that fact to calculate the probability of a needle crossing a line. If you call our two dimensional axis and draw the graph of the function d equals to l by 2 sin theta, we get a sinusoidal curve. Now since my constraints are from 0 to pi by 2, let's draw a rectangle in the screen such that the base is represented by pi by 2 and the height by the distance d. You will understand why everything is happening in a little while. For now, feel free to ponder on why the rectangle extends well above the highest point of the sine curve by pausing the video. Zooming at that particular rectangle, see how the area that is bound by the sine curve represents the condition of the needle crossing one of the lines. The whole rectangle meanwhile represents all the configurations of angles and distances that the needle can fall with. Then the probability that the needle falls exactly crossing the line can be represented by a fraction that is equal to the area under the curve divided by the area of the rectangle. With a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we can easily see that the probability we need is equal to 2L divided by pi d. At L equals to d, our probability then reduces to 2 by pi. The interesting thing to note in this particular regard is that if we had taken any angle in the constraint other than pi by 2 or a multiple of pi by 2, say pi for example, that would not have meddled with our probability at all. As the area under the sine curve would increase, so would the area of the rectangle in the same proportion, keeping probability a constant. That is because the area of the sine curve is symmetrical about pi by 2. Now back to the initial picture, if I am throwing needles over the lines randomly, the probability of a needle falling over a line would approximate to the needles falling such that they cross a line x divided by the total needles that are thrown n. Equating both the equations for probability, it's not very difficult to find an expression for pi which is equal to 2n divided by x. And that is the crux of what's going to model the simulation happening in a while. So are you excited for the takeoff? I bet you are. As the simulation starts, feel free to pause and ponder to get a sense of what's happening.
Now, did you enjoy what just happened? Let me know that in the comment box. That's it for today. Like, share and subscribe and help the channel grow.